I'm going to, uh, first of all, my name is Troy. Um, if you guys roll in here for lunch, there are a couple of you that do. You might see me working out here. But uh, I see the poster. Melanie, is that you're doing? Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. There's some more flyers if you haven't got any out here on your table. Um, I'm going to start us off with a little video here. This video, uh, we asked, is there anybody here familiar with Answers? The program Answers in Keystone? Yeah. Yeah? So, um, let me get this plugged in here somewhere. Um, I do. Daryl, you're a smarty. I'm trying to find out which one it is, and I can't see it. I'm not sure if that, can you see it from that side? Uh, it's right there. I just used his glasses. He did. You did good. All right. We're not. Are we up? All right, we're up. Good deal. Um, anyway. Antris is a program in community. It's a women's resource center. They call us a lot to assist with helping women and children that need emergency placement or housing. Sometimes we can put them in a hotel. Sometimes we put them in a, uh, a building that used to be part of the school over at the church where I attend. We can use that. But uh, this is one of the reasons why we're doing Morgan's House is because the need is so huge. So we'll start you off with that and I'll get going here <clears throat> do you have volume somewhere or no uh, no no volume no, okay no all right well I'll let I'll stop it after the intro and then I'll just talk about it That's all right. We'll just we'll just go through this. This just gives you some statistics of people that are homeless, people that are struggling with addiction. Um, it even given point one and a half million Floridians so uh, suffered from illicit drug dependence. We'll stop it right there. How many people know that addiction and those associated issues aren't just a big city issue, right? They're not. So Keystone Heights is one of those places that uh, we struggle. Let me let me back up. That's Tiffany. Can can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'm high strung. I have a tendency to wander. I like to go back and forth. But uh, my daughter Morgan, hence the name Morgan's House, struggled with methamphetamines for about five years. It started off simple enough she met a young fella and together they began to use opioids, painkillers, Xanax. It progressed to methamphetamines. She struggled with it for about five years and one of, sometimes one of the hardest things a parent has to do in a situation like that is uh, you gotta kind of suffer through the pain. You gotta initiate some tough love there's a fine balance between tough love and, and, and what's right and what's wrong with your child. I'm going to fast forward. We managed to get her to a place where she got some help and, and she got over the methamphetamines. But there was a secondary problem, as is the case a lot with drug abuse. How many people in here may know what methamphetamines are made out of? It's okay, this is audience participation. If you don't know, I'll tell you. Coleman fuel, bath salts, Drano, all kinds of different additives, gasoline, goes into making this drug. Things that your brain was not intended to process, chemicals that aren't supposed to be there. And this is what it does. It'll take a normal child, a normal adolescent, and then to give them other problems like paranoid schizophrenia, 
can be bipolar. You can have all kinds of issues. Morgan got clean from the methamphetamines, but her drug of choice, meth, was replaced by psychotropic drugs. Drugs to keep her on an even keel because now the drug had done its damage to her brain and now she's not right. I got a call one evening from my oldest daughter whom Morgan was living with and, and, and she said, Dad, Morgan shot herself in both the boys. My grandsons, her boys. Now no parent ever wants to get a phone call like that. There wasn't anything I could have done about it. And let me tell you something. Let me give you some advice for those of you that may have been through that. God's grace is sufficient for times like that if you'll press into him and into his word. Living in the coulda, shoulda, woulda will do you no good. It doesn't exist. It shouldn't exist in your world but for a fleeting moment. His grace is sufficient. I'm just going to leave it there. Now, I'm going to fast forward. Morgan's house is a transitional home. This is one of what we hope to be about eight homes in a community for women that are affected by addiction and abuse. See, Morgan might have been clean from meth and they might have put her on some other drugs, but she didn't have any buddy there to walk this out with her. And I think that society has gotten to the point where if we can just throw some drugs at it, we're okay. We're not okay. And it's not just Morgan. Now, I don't expect everybody here to be familiar with the level of addiction in our little community. You don't know what you don't know. The only reason I know is because this is what I do and I go looking for it every day. And I can tell you, with with 100% certainty. If you go down here to the Circle K on 100 and 214, the one that they call Gizmo, <clears throat> go up there on a Friday night or Saturday night and there are more drug deals going down at the gas pumps than gas deals. That's just how it is in this little community. Now I've heard people say, well, they started, they can quit if they want. And I suppose that that might be a partial truth but it's been my experience over 30 years that when you get a hold of a drug that chemically changes your brain and begins to tell you that you need it lest you're going to die that's where true addiction is and that's where it sets in it's not just somebody going out here and getting high behind the schoolhouse these are hardcore drugs fentanyl moved into our area last year I can't tell you how many deaths we've had in this part of Clay County last year. It's been a lot for the number of parents that I've sat with because their children have either passed away or they've committed suicide. Here's the thing, and I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb. I don't know you and you don't know me, and whenever you're in a new place, you've got to kind of be careful, and so I'm going to try to be careful here, but <clears throat> we have 40, 40 churches in this area four zero once upon a time keystone look it up if you want to used to hold the guinness book of world records for the most churches per mile per capita who knew that beside me my wife raising her hand you cheated because i told you we should by all practical purposes be a beacon on a hill and we're not I can't count on churches, but I can count on individuals within churches. I have friends in churches all across this city, non-denominational Baptist Pentecost, it doesn't matter. They see a need and, and they're prompted to try to meet the need. And so I wanna say, before I go any further here, thank you to this body you you are a small body, but you're large in heart and large in spirit. And, and, and I can tell you that confidently because I've been to a lot of churches in this community. 
and it doesn't matter how big you are or how small you are you know the scripture also tells us that where your heart lies so does your treasure well I look around here when we were trying to find a place to put this building well here we are how many people know that nothing just happens I don't believe anything just happens I think it's all ordained by him one way shape form or another and then Melanie takes up the cause all I know when I first met Melanie I didn't meet her I just knew her as Melanie Melanie because that's how she would message me it would be Melanie Melanie I'm like who's Melanie Melanie but I see what she's done with with you folks here and, and helping to spur you on towards Morgan's house it's our objective to take these women and these kids and give them an opportunity to come to a place like Morgan's house and catch the breath and have somebody with them to walk through to meet a, to make a plan moving forward so I'm going to give you one example and then I'm going to kind of ease out of here if the male the man whether he's husband boyfriend whatever whatever his classification is if he's the sole provider of the household and he's the user the substance abuser this is what I deal with around here all the time oftentimes they decide I'm out of here I'm just leaving they're just gonna abandon the family and sometimes they get incarcerated because they caught doing they got caught doing illegal drugs or whatever or stealing or whatever to to take care of their habit then they go to jail and let me tell you what happens there's very little time that this young woman or her children have before they become evicted especially if he is the primary breadwinner now if they're fortunate they have family that they can go to but in most cases, if you're any kind of experience in this, you know that, that a lot of those bridges are burned. So then the next fallback is friends where they can couch surf for a while. But that runs thin really quick, especially when you have children in tow. It just does. And then the third layer would be a vehicle. There's a lot of women that I've dealt with in this community and the surrounding areas that are living in cars sometimes with and sometimes without children. I can take you all to a place right now out in the woods where there's about 10 families. They're making it together, but they're living in the woods and they ended up there uh, as a result of drug abuse. Some of them are users and some of them aren't. They're just victims of what happens. And we as a community need to address it and so somebody's gotta do it right. So why not me, why not now? Not doing this because my daughter passed away. I was doing this for years before she passed away. It just becomes a bit more personal, right? When somebody close to you passes away. We want to be able to bring them into Morgan's house and get them connected with the resources and the right people to help mentor them and make a plan moving forward so that we don't lose just the abuser and the user, but we don't lose the woman and the kids. She is the core of the home when they're together and it's a ripple effect as he goes she goes as she goes the kids go so thank you for for helping us get this home built uh, thank you for those that have donated items to go uh, in this home um, it's an ongoing work it's a labor of love and and I gotta tell you you know if I had to rank churches and in, in, in their help you guys are like right there and I don't like to do that but everybody likes to know that what you're doing is making a difference and it is making a difference and but can I can I give a special thanks to Daryl and Mel that man has been with me every day every single day after work for two hours sometimes more yesterday he spent all day with me and uh, that means a lot to me he's he has a passion for what we're doing they both do and um, y'all can be very very proud of that so again thank you very much for everything that you're doing and if you have any questions I'll be available out here you can you can ask me um, and if you're available if you've got you don't even have to have skills <laughs> just show up here on a Saturday 
you know, or in the afternoon after work. I'm here every day from five to probably seven. After, I work a full-time job as well, so thank you very much. Again, appreciate it, and thank you for your speaking. Thank you.